bodies are still being raised. Hey. Giants are still being slain for you. God, we believe. And yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Lift those hands. Come and do what you do. Yeah. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We need to move. Does anybody need a move? We need a move. Say we need a move. Come on, lift those hands and say, Lord, I need a move. We 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 need a move.
Oh, this is a move of your spirit. And we bask in the spirit of your move. And we are sure that there is victory in you, in all that we seek. There is victory in Jesus. Oh, we worship you, oh God. We magnify your name. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one. Saint Church, who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? Nobody can. No one can. No one will. No one will.
I call you Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, I call you Jesus. Oh, 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 Say, I call you Jesus. Oh, 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 Say, I call you Jesus. Oh, 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 Say, Savior, Savior, Redeemer, Say, I Lord, Savior, Jordan, Redeemer, Name above all. specific instructions and that song we're going to sing it and when I was meditating in during the week I was reading John 3 verse 11 and it's amazing because I think for over revival in the first service used John 3 so I know that the spirit is definitely one and the verse comes from Nicodemus coming to speak to Jesus late in the night and he's asking him about being born again and about being born of the spirit and all of these things and Jesus replies to him I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, we speak of, we only speak of what we know. We know absolutely what we are talking about. We have actually seen what we are testifying to. We were witnesses of it and you still do not receive our testimony. You reject, you re refuse our evidence of that myself and those who are born of the Spirit. And so while we pray for revival, praying for this nation, revival, as we know, starts from us. Jesus said so confidently, said, we know what we're speaking of. The question is, do you know what you're speaking of? Because if Jesus was a healer and you saw someone who was sick, you would pray for that person to heal them. If Jesus is a savior and a redeemer, you know people who are oppressed and who are bound and do not have peace. You would tell people of that Prince of Peace. And when I was meditating and reading all of that, the Spirit really convicted me that if you know what you really know, you wouldn't be silent about Him. We wouldn't be shut up in our bones. It would be pouring out because we know what we are speaking of. And so that song is a prayer. And before we go into it, Romans 8, 19 said that creation are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of man. They're waiting for us. They're waiting for us. They're waiting for someone who's going to point them to a healer, to a restorer, to a redeemer, to a helper. And that person is you. It's me. It's us. But we can only do that if we know who we're speaking of. It's not something we just come on Sunday, oh, just to pray, oh, I call you Jesus, amen, amen, and go back to your business. No. Something happens when we call upon that name. He's being glorified right now in the heavens and in the earth. Let's lift up our voices and pray for ourselves. Let's pray for a manifestation, for a new realization, for a renewed renewing, a new reawakening of what that word means to us. Is he a healer? Has he been a provider? Is he faithful to you? Has he been a restorer? Did he really redeem your life from the pit? Because if he has, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be quiet. The church wouldn't be quiet about it. Father God, we come before you. Saints, let's pray. We come before you, Lord. We ask for God for forgiveness. We pray, Almighty Father, that if we've been so caught up in our routine, in our religion, that we've forgotten who you are. 
Father God, give us a boldness through your spirit to have a boldness to know who we speak of. To know that we are testifying that he is a healer, that he is a restorer, that he is a way maker. We call you Jesus. You are the healer. You are the redeemer. Father God, let those songs of worship have a new meaning. Let it cause us to shaking in our offices, in our workplaces, in our hospitals, in our schools, oh God, in our homes. Let it have place in our homes. Father God, equip us from the inside out that we start declaring those things. Why can we have that song again, please? Why can we have that song again, please? Thank you, God. Father Lord, we are asking God for a renewal of that word. Let it not just be a song on Sunday. Let it be a chant, a mantra, a motto throughout the whole week, every day. There's no name stronger than the name of Jesus. Yes, there's no name higher than the name of Jesus. We submit this nation into your hands. We say, oh God, we will go and we'll tell them of the power of the name of Jesus. That it healed me. It restored me. Father God, there is none like you, oh God. And Jesus, we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We'll overcome by the power of our testimony. We'll say we don't know how, but he did it. Yes, and we had that verse. Yes. No name is higher than the name. Caroline Newman and welcome to this week's 7 News. The suit of God is without doubt one of the most anticipated events at Jesus House. This year's theme is overflow and I'm sure that we will not be disappointed. Meetings are happening on Mondays to Thursdays from 7 to 9 p.m. There are lunch hour prayer meetings Mondays to Fridays from 12 noon until 1 p.m. and our nights of worship on Fridays from 7 till 10 p.m. There are special prayer meetings on Saturday the 8th and the 15th of June. The prayer meetings are from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Saturday prayer meetings will be focused on addressing long-term issues. Our children are also in pursuit of God. Kids in Pursuit will take place from Monday to Thursday from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. Registration for the children is mandatory on the link shown on the screen. Our incredible lineup of speakers include Reverend Joe Alaya, Dr. Oki Onuzo, Prophetess Sharon Stone, Gavin Calver, Reverend Eastwood Anaba, Pastor Leki Sanusi that they are the ecclesia, they are a government in this nation. At the end of the story, you behave differently in the middle. However many good things happen, however many revivals, however many miraculous healings, however many resurrections we see in this church here. Our friends, Chevelle Franklin, Nathaniel Bassey, and our very own tribe of Judah will enhance our worship through music and song. So remember, put the dates in your diary, the 1st to the 21st of June, and come expecting 21 days of basking in the presence of God and expect overflow in your life. The 
men's meeting this month is on Thursday the 23rd of May, starting at 7 p.m. It's an opportunity for men to get together where you will be encouraged to create positive impact in your life, in the lives of your family, your community and the world. It's an opportunity for men to get together and discuss relevant issues of the day and to support each other on their Christian walk. So please put the date in your diary and make an effort to come along on Thursday the 23rd of May, 7pm for the men's monthly meeting. for this year's Ageless One worship experience is Let the Glory Fall. Ageless One is happening on Saturday the 6th of July right here at the Jesus House Worship Centre and it starts at 6pm. Ageless One worship experience is an event that gives people from different backgrounds the opportunity to come together to worship God. It's an extended time of worship where we give God the room to manifest himself by the power of the Holy Spirit. This event will give you the opportunity to experience the power of God through your involvement and participation in corporate worship. Everyone's invited and it's a wonderful opportunity for you to invite people who don't normally come to church. To register, go to Eventbrite and search Ageless One Worship Experience. I look forward to seeing you there. The Wildfires Festival is happening this year from Monday the 27th to Wednesday the 29th of May. It's happening in Whiston Estate, West Sussex. Festival goers are in for a treat this year because our own overseer is going to be one of the keynote speakers. For more information and to book, just go to their website, wildfiresfestival.com. Remember, this year's Kids First camping trip is taking place from the 27th of July to the 3rd of August. This year's trip has been organised by Urban Saints at Northamptonshire. The cost is £239 per child. This has to be paid by the 31st of May. The Kids First Ministry is organising transportation to the camp for an additional fee. If you'd like your child to travel with Kids First, then please send an email to kidsfirstministry at jesushouse.org.uk. Well, that's it for this week's 7 News. Here's a recap of this week's announcement. You can watch us again on our website, jesushouse.org.uk. And remember, we're social here at Jesus House. We're on all the major social media platforms, so you can like us, friend us, follow us, and engage with us there. Our handles are at Jesus House UK and at Jesus House London. Until next time, have a blessed week. Amen, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday. Welcome to church this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate the Lord simply because he is God. And let's welcome our online audience. We're grateful to have you worshiping with us this morning. We do appreciate the simple fact that you logged on. We are grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this morning is really interesting because we have some very special friends with us today. From the 12th to the 18th of May has been Christian Aid Week. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to please sit back while we play you a video to tell you about the thrust of their week this year.
and Yalena Teneba or Tina de Sarai. Then Nago Queen of Bui, Yavu are twenty one. I am Matam Nama Queen of Boo. My heart is training my heart down to me, woman. It's a minimal high eating yan in a home where my way queen or Loma eating yan and where my home will live in a mile walk. Yeah, Lord, you do a TB in a summer thing, I'm a bloony. You feel the pony of wear by the hanty. You go do it, you now go do it in a tetia corner, and there are the boy and young at ten minutes. And I said, Gagoya, my Gagoya, get on your loo, Catigo Gagagi. I took a good guy and yalubi A moment to bat, call over hospital and Emma. Get Auntie Juliet, get a leg on a cadet, and look where I have a couple of walk. Not a movie log, a half up on a grammar heart, and move up on a book header. It's tired, Julie, better to call you, boo, yam, grammar, and more speech to you, a little bit of move was off a journey. Put a going yamma for never power. Glamma and Sumana Bangali. Judith, tell me what you did here. I did not make a lot of money. I got what I wanted. I got what I wanted. I got what I wanted. Amen. A very touching story. And the Bible then joins us when we are kind to the least of these, the people that Jesus calls the least of our brethren. We are kind directly to Him. And so this morning, ladies and gentlemen, we have um, three members of the Christian Aid team with us. We have Sharon Sturge, who is the wife of Mark Sturge, a friend of the house. We have Dion Graves-Zandy. I hope I got that right. Um, the Senior Ecumenical Relations Manager. And the lady who will be speaking to us this morning is their Chief Executive Officer. She has a 25-year from what she said in the first service, 25-year history in the voluntary sector. It spans from Christian Aid through the UNDP, the United Nations Development Program, through organizations like the VSO, the Volunteer Services Organization, and SkillServe, so ladies, or Skillshare. And so ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to kindly give a really warm Jesus house welcome to Amanda Cozy. Mukwasi. Good morning. Good morning, Jesus House. Speak to me. I am really, it's a privilege for me uh, to be here. I arrived this morning and uh, listening to the music is, uh, is my thing. I'm not the world's greatest singer, but I just love when I hear voices lifted up in praise and worship to our God. Amen? Amen. I started, I joined Christian Aid last year in April. And I just want to thank um, some of you who have been praying for me. Um, as the first uh, African black chief executive of Christian Aid in its over 70 years. Thank you. I really didn't know what to expect, but I knew and I was very confident in that for me, this was not just another job, but it was a job that God had been preparing me for. But even then, I didn't realize just the extent of the things that I didn't know. In my first 12 months, I told myself that I really needed to go out and visit our programs and to see what type of things that we were doing. 
So from Bangladesh to Bolivia, Brazil, I went off to Kenya, Zimbabwe, Malawi. And what I saw there broke my heart. And it's not like I haven't been working in international development for a long time. But it broke my heart because what I saw was a world that was very rich in resources. But because of human constructs, because of the structures, the systems, the economic and political systems that are now broken, what we see is uh, a few people benefiting at the expense and the cost of millions of people around the world. UN statistics currently tell us that uh, there are over 800 million people in extreme poverty at a time when if we shared our resources much more effectively, there would be no need for that. Before this day is over, my brothers and sisters, 10 women who have died trying to give birth in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is the most dangerous place in the world to give birth. That is not news. That is not a good statistic to have. One out of nine children will die before they reach the age of five in Sierra Leone. And here is what, is, what disturbs me, that 99% of all maternal death happen in developing countries. And out of that, 99% are preventable. I went to Ethiopia, and when I was in Ethiopia, I visited uh, women's groups in South Omo. And what they said to me was, look, we are trying to live a life of dignity. We're trying to help ourselves. But it's getting hotter and hotter every year. Our crops are failing. Our livestock are dying. We have no income to access healthcare services or to send our children to school. We don't know what else we can do. And you look at these women and you see women who want to have dignity in their lives. They want to be able to fend for themselves. But everything that they're doing is being impacted on and affected negatively by the global consumption habits and production habits that mean that climate change is becoming more and more. I could tell you other stories of places that I have visited, like Kenya, where I went and I saw the young children. You talk to a little boy who is eight years old. I have my own children. And you look at him and he's living positively with HIV. And yet when you say to him, Brian, tell me about yourself. He says to you, I want to be a pilot. And one day when you come to Kenya, I'll be the pilot on the plane that you're on. And you say to him, what can I do for you? And he says, I just want a textbook so that I can be the best in my class. Brothers and sisters, when you hear these stories, you realize that these are not textbook stories. These are the lived realities of people, not just on the African continent, but also in Latin America, in Asia, in the Caribbean, that these stories are real. While we are grappling with conversations of policy in New York, in London, in Paris, on the ground, women are dying. People have no food. I'm on my way to Nigeria soon. We work in the north of Nigeria. There are 1.9 million people who are permanently displaced in that region. Every month, Christian Aid, in partnership with other UN agencies, we are providing food, food and shelter, food to over 300,000 people a month. God has given us an abundance of wealth, of resources, and we have broken the pact with him to go out and cultivate and look after those resources and nurture them and look after each other. We need healing, we need restoration, and we need a new, create, a new relationship with God. 
That's what we need. I want to say to you, because I can see that my time will be over soon, that you know, one of the scriptures that I shared this morning that gives me, it gives me, it challenges me, but also gives me hope and gives me that desire to do something different, is when God in Ezekiel 22 says, you have exploited the poor. You have taken advantage of those who are vulnerable and the foreigners in your midst. And I have searched, the Bible said, God laments and says, I have searched among my people and I have not found one who can come and rebuild the wall, who can come and stand in the gap. And I'm saying, no, Lord, don't say that you haven't found one. Please use me with all my imperfections, with all my lack of knowledge and ignorance. The one thing that I want to bring to you, my God, is a heart that desires to do the will of God. Use me so that I can touch the hearts and minds and lives of those people back home. I'm originally from Zambia. For me, the story of international development and poverty is not a story. I have relatives who live in poverty. I have cousins, nephews that are challenged in terms of education. So for me, this is not just somebody else's story. And when I come here to Jesus' house and I look at all of you in front of me, I say to myself, I am among brothers and sisters. I am among mothers, aunties, grandfathers, grandmothers, who all, I hope, share in this commitment to respond to the call of God and reach out not only to our friends and families and extended families, but to those who we don't know by name, but God knows them by name. And so I want to say to you, whether you are a young Jeremiah who God has called and said, come, go, don't say, no, I cannot do that because I am young. Because God says, I shall go before you, declares the Lord. Or whether you are Dorcas, Tabitha, who responded and said, yes, I will go and help the widows. And I want to leave you with this. That for me, working for Christian Aid and coming here at the end of this Christian Aid week, I take it as a, a privilege. It is humbling for me. And I have said to God, I want to be like Deborah. Deborah is the character for me in the Bible. The woman who responded, who took up the challenge, and who stepped up to the mantle of leadership and said, God, I will serve you. And the Bible tells me, during the 40 years that she was in leadership, Israel knew peace. Let us stand in the gap. That is my call to action this morning. Let me plead with you. Let us respond and stand in the gap and protect and build that war against injustice, against poverty, against extreme vulnerability, against violence and conflict. And at the end of the day, no woman should die because they want to bring a life into this world. I praise God for you. I pray for you. And as I go away, I ask that you pray for us. Let us pray for each other, but more than that, let us take action because God wants us to act. My very many thanks to you and to your continued support. Christian Aid Week is one week. Maternal mortality happens throughout the year. So let us support throughout the year. God bless you. Would you stand with me? Ladies and gentlemen, we're a praying community, and I'm going to ask Amanda to stand with me for a moment as a point of contact. And can we stretch our hands towards her and as she represents her organization? And let's just begin to ask God that he's kind to them, that God gives them the grace to carry the flag into country after country, 
that God allows them to fulfill their mission and their calling, standing up against poverty in a way that many of us can't, that they will be a conduit for the grace and the kindness that God will grant, that God will multiply our resources so we can bless people like this to do the work of the Lord all over the world. And can we especially pray for Amanda that according to her desire, that her desire is that she may stand as, as a Deborah, as one who stood, stood up for those who couldn't stand up for themselves. And let's just ask that God will give her grace, the wisdom and the insights to lead a multinational. That God, because she is a first, that God will give her the opportunity to set a standard that many other young and up-and-coming black women will be able to follow in a great way. And we ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody said, and everybody said, Amen. God bless you. And so ladies and gentlemen, um, I have an honor. And I've been a Christian for over 33 years now. And I've been a Christian for about two weeks. And I met a speaker. And it was humbling. Because in two or three sentences, he changed the way we saw God. And every time he has spoken since then, he has been graced to do it in the same humble and kind way. Please, please, could we kindly welcome to the pulpit Dr. Oke Onuzo. Praise the Lord. My wife and I are pleased to be here to share fellowship. Amen. Okay, we sing the hymn then. Standing on the promises of God. The promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let us praise His reign. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. I am standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, I am standing. Promises of God, my Savior, standing. 
Claro. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily when the Spirit soars. I am standing on the promises of God. Standing. in and reveal your truth in our hearts that we may walk by your truth for in Jesus precious name we pray Amen thank you you may please be seated thank you choir thank you very much I want you to come with me to Matthew chapter 7 Matthew chapter 7. From verse 24. Therefore, this is the New King James Version. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. And somebody said, Amen. Our meditation is on the living word. The living word. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word <clears throat> became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. And somebody said, Amen. Like I said in the first service, that the Apostle John introduced us to what I have called a mystical tangibility, which in itself is a contradiction in terms, because mystical things are not usually tangible. But then, he 
here we have one that is. As we read from John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And darkness did not comprehend it. Here the Bible tells us that the living word of God pre-existed. He was with God and was God all the way from eternity. He experienced pre-existence because he was in the beginning with God. This living word was at the center of all creation. The Bible says there is nothing that was made that was made without him. In other words, he gave life as we know it to every creature. And then the word, the Bible says, came with life. And that life was the light of men. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ said, He who hears my word is like a man who built his house on the rock. And why is, did he build his house on the rock? Not because he was anticipating uh, uh, the wind, the rain, and the flood, but because they happen in nature. They happen in nature. And he built it on the rock so that if those floods do come, then that house will be able to what? Stand. That's what it's really all about. That when we receive the word and structure our lives according to the word, the word empowers us to face our adversities. One of the scriptures that has ministered to me over the years is in Proverbs 24.10. It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is what? Small. And, and the, the Holy Spirit showed me that the reason why the strength is small, because it's really your strength. But if it was his strength, and then you see you can, you can wear that through. And that strength is received, as we will see, through the word. Nobody can get strength by macho, by intellectual uh, strength or, or power. Nobody can get strength by knowledge only. They get it by the Spirit through the Word. We gain strength by the Spirit through the Word. And the Bible says that, that Word had life. And that life is intelligence, cognition, reason, thought, all the faculties of the soul, will, passion. That Word had all, has all of that. So that when we begin to enter into it, it begins to transform us from inside out. And that's where the strength is going to come from. Can you say amen to that? Now the other significant thing to note is that that word and the life it brings is the opposite of darkness. It is light and wherever that word imparts its light. What happens to darkness? It recedes. It recedes. And that's one of the challenging things because darkness can present in various forms of evil, sin, 
demonic attacks, challenges. But the Bible says that whatever kind of darkness that is confronting you, that that light will overcome it. Can you say amen to that? You know, um, 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 one of the um, uh, experiences in, in ministry that I had years ago is talking about darkness from the point of view of darkness in my own ignorance until one day the Spirit of God said to me, nobody overcomes darkness by understanding darkness. No, it's foolish. So the only way you overcome darkness is by increasing the intensity of your what? Yeah, yes. Yes. By increasing, daily increasing the intensity of your light. Now, the mystery of the world that pre-existed was revealed to us in verse 14 of John chapter 1, which says, and the word became what? Flesh. When John wrote, you know, in 1 John, he said, that which we saw, that which we touched, that which we tasted and experienced. John was saying, the word became flesh, reality with us. And that's why um, uh, um, the scripture said that God prepared a body for our Lord Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary. And, and you can picture it. And he just came and uh, entered it to come into the world. The word lived among us like an ordinary man. And that's where really a lot of people have their problem. Because uh, they, they cannot uh, uh, reconcile the man and the God. I said, this is not something that uh, subjects itself to intellectual analysis. How God became a, a man. It's either you believe it or you don't believe it. And if you believe it, then the benefits of it will begin to accrue to you. you to, the benefits will begin to accrue to you. Don't engage anybody on that debate. It's a fruitless exercise. So we saw the glory of God on him. And that's why it's one of the studies that uh, benefits the soul. is the study of the man, Jesus you know, how he reflected the glory of God in his life. So that you and I can, uh, um, through the example, like Paul wrote in, a, in a Second Corinthians, he said, when we behold him, okay, we are transformed into his what? Likeness. Yes. When you study his humility, his humility begins to enter into you. When you study his love, his love begins to be manifest through you. When you study his kind, ha, a kindness, it begins to be reflected through you. When you study his holiness, his forgiveness, you see, when you, when you study it intellectually, it's hanging in the air somewhere. There is no power connection. But when you study him, then the Holy Spirit brings the light of his life into your own life. Can you say amen to that? He said, we saw the glory of God in him and in his life as a man. So that is where you and I connect to the living word. We receive, the Bible says, we receive of his fullness. In other words, what uh, the Bible says in uh, 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 John chapter 8, I know, it's Romans chapter 8, 29. Those he did for no. He did what? Predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son. You know, some people hear that and they're like, okay, maybe the reason why I'm not really saved is because um, he didn't uh, include me. Oh, no, that's not the way it works. Okay? When they say he did for no, he did for no because he knows everything. But it's not in the context of John, Peter, Mary. No, he did for no Christians. And he did ordain in eternity. 
that everyone that accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior should be conformed to the image of Christ. That's why many people don't understand election. Election is open. It's not closed. You see, election is not, I have come here and chosen 10 people. The rest can go to hell. No. Election is, here is the avenue to enter and become elected. It's your choice. It's your choice. So, he elected us in Christ. And so we receive of the fullness of his, and the Bible says it's in measures because we lack capacity to, to, to receive all the fullness in one go. You can imagine if they confronted you with the fullness of his forgiveness and somebody has just carried your car away, it's okay, I forgive you. You can go. Or somebody has just really hurt you deeply and you're still wondering what to do. So, ah, I've received the fullness. That's it. But you see, you get it bit by bit. You know, maybe it's just your brother that did something. So remember the cross. Father, forgive them. Then having been able to forgive your brother who didn't pay you back the 50 pounds you gave him, now you're in a position to take something a lot uh, bigger. Yes. That's why the Bible says it's from grace to grace. Nobody jumps out. No, you will be totally overwhelmed. You know, somebody once said, yes, Jesus will forgive you. I'm not Jesus. I say yes, but the whole idea is that daily we are growing to become a uh, like him, yes. We receive of his fullness. He is the, 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 the quintessence, the, 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 the greatest example ever there could be of life on earth in all its fullness, in his power, in his humility, and everything, okay? As we increasingly and progressively receive measures of this his fullness, we are transformed into his image. So we become partakers, like the Bible says, partakers of the divine nature. Now, everybody must have an ambition, you know, to be a partaker of the divine nature. You know, and that's how you know that um, um, when we don't develop the human character to be like the character of Christ, it's a loss. It doesn't matter what else we become. If we are not becoming like Jesus, we have not, we are very little use to God. We can be, I told somebody recently, I said, you can grow people who are very useful to the church. But they're not useful to God. Because the Holy Spirit can't dwell in them. They're rebellious. They're not obedient to God. So, but they can run all over and do everything here. But, but it's a waste. It's a waste in time and eternity. So let us develop people that the church can use, but primarily that God can use. Because you see, anybody that God can use, the church can use. Now, it was Peter that explained to us the connection between the living word and the written word. Because, you see, we can be lost in the mystical of the living word. And imagine endlessly what it means that Christ was prehistoric, pre preexistential. In other words, he was before creation. And yet, he became a man. But then Peter told us, so come with me to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. He said, as his divine nature, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and what? Godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Then verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and Precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, 
having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Peter said, the word, the written word, was given to us to use to, cli to, to climb the bridge between the carnal human nature and the nature of God. And so through the written word, by understanding, believing, living according to the written word, we take on the nature of the living word. And that's how the living word and the written word connect together. Because the living word gave the written word. That's why we yeah, savor the scripture in, um, in uh, John chapter 16. Okay? The living word that came down from heaven. And the written word given to man. Jesus spoke about that in uh, John 16, 13. How be it, he says, when he, the spirit of truth who gave the written word, when he is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. In other words, the spirit that gave the word is giving the written word was giving us the life of who? The living word. So that we can become like him. And the first and primary benefit is that we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. We have escaped. The words are chosen carefully. You see? Not that we have embraced. No, we have uh, escaped. That's why Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2.11, he said, as pilgrims and sojourners, okay, flee from lust that war against what? The soul. Because loss consume everything. It saps spiritual energy. And when you talk about loss, it's not only your immorality. No, because a lot of people think that the, 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 the first temptation of Christ is the lust of the flesh. And it wasn't about sex. Command this stone that become bread. That's the lust of the flesh. And Jesus said, man shall not what? Live by bread alone. And we can multiply that. Man cannot live by money alone, by sex alone, by whatever it is that has consumed you. So, so he said we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, when we therefore embrace the written word, we receive the written word as part of the living word, then our lives is transformed accordingly. And we discover daily that as we become more and more like the living word, his life, his power, his awesome greatness, that is totally, you see, that's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, that the love of Christ to comprehend the length, the breadth, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ, which is what? Beyond understanding. In, in Ephesians chapter 3. Such awesomeness now begins to be distilled into our lives. Okay? What that means is that our priorities... Our focus has radically transformed from carnal to spiritual. So what is the practical 
significance of all this, okay, it's not just to know that the mystery in the living word can be accessed through the written word. What is the practical significance? Something that every single one of us can use in our daily living. Practical situations. And for this, I would just like to share a personal testimony briefly. Like I told them in the first shift, I took ill in March. As I went into hospital, I actually walked to the hospital. The Holy Spirit whispered to me, all things work together for good. And that became really like a, a rock in my heart. All things work together for good. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I walked into hospital, and after 12 hours of observation, the doctors realized that I was actually seriously ill. And they took me to the intensive care. And while I was there, the Holy Spirit, he whispered to me again, say, remember, the greater one is inside. The greater one is inside. First John 4.4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then at some point I wondered, you know, about the sickness, you know, the way we all are, where is it coming from, what is all this all about, you know. And our Lord Jesus quickly brought the scripture to me. He said, when you stand praying, do what? Forgive. So even if you thought, oh, something happened, or somebody did something, Forgive. And the moment, the moment I began to say, Lord, whoever uh, 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 did something against me or did anything, I uh, release everybody. A new atmosphere came into that, my hospital room. A completely new atmosphere came into that room. Because you see, the, 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 the living word and the written word are together. They're together. Then at some point, of course, I recall some of my own messages that nothing happens without divine permission. And that is Lamentations 337. Who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? That's Job chapter 1 verse 6. The devil went to heaven, you know, and said, if this Job, you are the one protecting him, and then the permission was uh, granted, you know. And that's the same way that Jesus said in Luke 22, that he said, Simon, Simon, the devil has asked for permission to sift you like wheat, you know. But you see, there is also another angle to that. And that angle is, uh, is uh, from... Uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 3, where the Bible says in verse 1 that Joshua, the high priest, was standing before God for empowerment. And who was standing next to him? Satan, to resist him. And what was he standing with? A list of his misdemeanors. Okay? And, 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 and the Bible says Joshua was covered with uh, filthy garments. And David had already, had already uh, 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 said in Psalm 19 verse 12, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? King James says, who can understand all his errors? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. 
And the scripture came back to me in Revelations 12.10 that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And he is accusing them before God. How often? Day and night. Day and night. He's collecting evidence in which to use to gain permission. And what is the solution? The solution is in verse 11. And the saints overcame him by the what? Blood of the Lamb. And I'm sure I've spoken to you about that before. That the reason why the saints overcame him by the blood of the Lamb is that for every accusation brought before you and I, before God, you present who? The blood. Because the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the blood of Jesus Christ said, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Then I began to pray, say, Lord, Whatever accusation the enemy, the real enemy has against me before you, my answer is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. And that again brought a measure of confidence that I can now not begin to think, oh, it might be something. I said, no, there's nothing. My plea is now for every accusation. For every accusation. And that is the power in the written word. To connect to the power of the living word. Through the Holy Spirit. Finally, I left hospital after 15 days. The Holy Spirit, he whispered to me, he said, go and tell my people that God and his word are one. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I recall that uh, some time ago when I was concerned about my prayer life, the Holy Spirit whispered to me, anytime you want to pray, pick up your Bible. I thought I understood what he meant. Now I know I didn't. Because I understand better now that I am to pray the word. I am to actually pray the word of God to become reality in my life. And that's why Jesus said, ask and you shall what? Yes, seek and you shall find. Knock and you shall be opened. And for everyone that asketh, receive. Everyone that seeks finds. And to everyone that knocks, it will be opened. You know, he taught us many things. He taught us persistence, insistence. Once you're standing on the word, persistence, insistence. And please, you don't care what other people believe. Because there's always the, this issue of, I know one brother, John. That he believed, you know, and then you see something happened to him. But do you really know what he believed? You know, like the preacher said, uh, um, 10 people, there was drought in a place, and 10 people prayed for rain. And when they came the next day, only one person brought an umbrella. So what did the rest of them believe? So you cannot really tell what people believe. They say, Lord, it must rain today. He didn't bring an umbrella. So he wasn't expecting a... a yes. So you cannot tell what people really believe. You cannot tell what they believe. And the only way to believe is to stay on that word and say, Holy Spirit, make this written word alive where? In my heart. Yes. I want this word to come alive in me. That is it. Only the spirit does that. Connects the written word to the living word. Only the spirit does that. 
And then you see, it doesn't just work for, you know, all the things we want, our success, our the other. No, it works for fundamentals too. And what is one of those fundamentals? Romans six fourteen, sin shall not have what, dominion. Dominion. So there is no uh, 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 excuse for me making excuses. Well, you know, my father had hot temper. In fact, I was. I learned that my grandfather was worse. So you see, this hot temper is where, in my blood. Yes, it's inside my blood. You know, that's what they call besetting sins. So when you, you, you and somebody fight physically, you say, well, I really can't help myself. It's in my, uh, uh, it's in my blood. You know, my father had uh, 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 four wives, uh, six girlfriends. I can't help myself. All against that backdrop comes the word that says, sin shall not have what? Dominion. And then you say, say, Lord, let this word become what? Reality. Sin must not have dominion over my life. No, no, no. Because this vessel must be a habitation of the spirit. Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. You know, and when you, I tell people the way this works is that if you go to God and say, sin must not have dominion over me, they look into your heart and they see that that desire is for real, the power will come down. It never fails to come down if the desire is real. But if they look into your heart, you know, we have a proverb in Iboland in Nigeria. They said you are counseling a, a man that steals yam. In his heart, he's making new diggers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you will use the next time around. So you see, when they look into the heart and find that this is what is going on, ah, they don't waste energy now. They don't waste energy. Okay. And then there is another one. Because there are people who are wondering, how can, I, how can I break away from the th sins that plague my life? And then the word comes and said, if you live after the flesh, you will die. Romans 8.30. But if you, by the Spirit, put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. So stopping bad habits or things that are wrong in our lives is not by determination. You know, you know, in those um, old days, January, uh, December 31st, make your new year. Uh -huh. One of them, I will not smoke again. Number two, I will not drink again. That's um, 31st. By 6 o'clock on the 1st, <laughs> everything has broken down. <laughs> the Bible says, no, no, no. You don't break those things by willpower or by, by resolution. You have to go to God and say, Holy Spirit, put these desires to what? Death. Put them to death. That's the power of the written word. To connect to the living word. Okay? And then, of course, that's, there is the, the one that the Spirit gave me at the beginning of this whole experience. All things work together. So, leave out James. Leave out John. Even if they are directly responsible. Leave out uh, Peter and Mary. All things work together for good. It will turn out to my good. Because God is with me. That is it. That is it. So, you are hanging on those scriptures. As the spirit will pick in them to you. I have three uh, prayers here. You know. And one of them has become very significant because everybody needs empowerment. And the first one here comes from Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, 
Even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And so to pray that scripture, you know, Lord, may every devil on my path today be subject to me in your name. Just like it was to the disciples. Let Satan fall like what? Lightning on my path today. And then, Lord, I receive a quickening of your authority. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of uh, the enemy. All the powers of the enemy. Now, the, 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 the next statement in that empowerment scripture, the next statement is very vital. It said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. I call it the charter of invincibility. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And you know, if you live where I live in Nigeria, people will come with all kinds of stories. They went to Babalao, they poured water, the man appeared, they pinned him. Say, by any means, nothing shall by any means. means. Whether they went to Bar Beach at 12 midnight, and wrote your name and gave to mommy water. <laughs> you know, wherever they went, wherever they said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Believe that word. Receive that word. Stand on it, and the spirit will connect you. That's the way it works. It's the spirit that connects. And that's how every individual can be empowered. You and I, ordinary, you know, I I told you before, there's ordinary people living extraordinary lives. Yes, ordinary people. Nobody knows your name. You have no pedigree, no bishop, no overseer, nothing. And yet the power of God is with you. That's what it is. That's what it is. And then, of course, you know, uh, for challenges, like the type I had, Isaiah 53, 5, and 1 Peter 2, 24. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. And, and many people standing on that word have been connected to the healing power of God. By his stripes, I am healed. Standing on it. I, I, I have stories of a, a man that was uh, paraplegic from the waist down. I gave him a tract with that word. And as he read it, the Holy Spirit whispered to him, what is a man that is healed still doing on the bed? What is a man that is healed still doing on the bed? So, he was in a hospital bed in the middle of the night. He sat up. He used his hand to carry one leg down and used the other hand to carry the other leg down. And he propped up himself, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. The nurse is trying, hey, 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 don't, don't. <laughs> he said, by his stripes, I'm healed. The power of God hit him. Amen. Yes. Yes. When we stand on the word, Because the written word connects to the living word by the spirit. And then the the, the pressure of material need and financial resources. A lot of pressure. You see? That's what uh, leads to the hypocrisy of our Christian witness, particularly where I live. That the churches are full on Sunday. But on Monday, 
corruption continues uh, as usual. You know, like one sister said, I went to one office, they said I should bring 500 naira. I went to another office, they said I should bring 1,000 naira. So she said she started to ask herself, are there no Christians in these places that will walk up to you and say, what do you need? Or you come, come and take it. No, 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 no money. Uh, somebody told me that uh, um, in the 70s revival, they went to the post office or somewhere, you know, and they found uh, there are three cages where, you know, all those cage, people in cages, there are three that you could receive the form. One cage had to, about uh, 20, 30 people. The other one, just two or three people. They all given the same form of. So what was the difference? The man with the 20 people, he doesn't take bribe. So you just come, you collect your form, and uh, so everybody's lined up there. I said, to his greatest surprise, he was a Christian he mentored. He had a, 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 a something there. We don't take bribe here. He wrote it and put it on his window. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's not that they've put me here. Ah, it's my opportunity to prosper. Mm. It's my opportunity to prosper. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added. And so, if you have the wrong orientation, to success, to wealth, to uh, financial empowerment, then, then change everything now so it can be kingdom driven. It can be kingdom driven. Begin to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Be the only one who is not collecting. Be the only one who is not bowing to, 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 to uh, mammon. Be the only one. And then, what Jesus said in verse 32 will begin to happen to you. He said, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And when the kingdom comes, it comes with everything. It comes with everything. Particularly the empowerment. And don't forget that when you are kingdom driven and you're on the kingdom path, the resources you need will be on that path. Because God always makes provision. But you see, if you're on your own path, that's a totally different matter. All the angelic help you need, all of that will be on the kingdom path. And that's why this day I urge you, with all my heart, give your life a new focus. Be a kingdom citizen. Have a kingdom orientation to your life. And see that the word works. That when you are a kingdom citizen, the word works. No matter what challenge you are facing. And we face diverse challenges. No matter what. Then the spirit will give you the word. That will connect you to the power of God. To take you through. Can you say amen to that? Bow your head and let us pray. I want you to talk to God and say to him, Lord, give me a new focus to my life. I want to be a kingdom citizen. Let me not be, let me not be like unbelievers. Chasing mammon here, there, and yonder. Let me have a single focus, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And as I pursue it, let me see the word materialize and bring other things into my life. Someone here may be saying, Lord, I don't even have the kingdom at all in my heart. Jesus, please come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And if you are that someone I want you to pray for yourself and say, Lord Jesus, 
Please come into my heart now and be my Lord and my Savior. I want to follow you. I want to be with you here. And when life is over, I want to be with you in eternity. If you're saying that prayer, I would like to pray with you. And if you've said that prayer, just raise your hand wherever you are. I'd like to pray with you. Is there anyone? Is there anyone this afternoon? Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Okay, now, for the rest of us, give, say, go to God and say, Lord, give me a new focus to my life. I want to be a kingdom-oriented citizen, for it is my Father's good pleasure to give me that kingdom with all its power and its glory. The glory of God that Jesus brought here, I said, we beheld his glory. I want to share in that glory. Make me a kingdom-oriented Christian. I want you to rise and join me as we share in this song. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and change this thirsting of my soul. Scripture now. It's Ephesians 1.11. Can you put it up? Ephesians, New King James Version. Ephesians 1.11. The Bible says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance. And we have been predestined according to the purpose predestined according to the purpose of him. Now, the next statement is crucial. He works how many things? How? According to the counsel of what? His own will. Yes. So this morning or this afternoon, I want you to say to Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. He walks everything. There's a, there is a predestined inheritance. There is an inheritance. But you can't get there unless you are going according to the counsel of his own will. And so tell him this morning, Lord Jesus, may your Holy Spirit guide me. I want to walk according to the counsel of God's will in my life. In every area. Family, children's education, 
decisions about where I live, where I walk. I want to walk according to the counsel of your own will so that I can enter into that inheritance. There is a predestined inheritance to every child that is called. I want to walk after the counsel of your own will. Jesus, see my heart. I want to walk after the counsel of the will of my father. That's why Jesus said, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I will walk according to the counsel of your own will, O oh Lord my God. In everything, I will not seek my own will. I will not seek my own counsel. I will seek the counsel of your own will. In Jesus' precious name we pray. I didn't hear that amen. amen. Put your right hand on your head as we pray. Father, as many as have said this prayer with deep sincerity in their heart, O Spirit of the living God, connect each one to their inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever obstacle may be on their path, I command remove now in the name of Jesus Christ that your people may truly possess the kingdom. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I will... Before we celebrate the Lord, I will crave your indulgence to remain standing. Dr. Onozo is here with his lovely wife, who we fondly call Auntie Miriam, Dr. Miriam Onozo. But I feel very, very strongly that as a praying community and as a family, that we pray specifically for them today. We didn't do this in the first service, but the impression is strong. And so... Can we stretch our hands towards them as a point of contact? And can you begin to pray in the Spirit? And let's begin to ask the Lord. It's a very specific prayer. It's found in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. The Bible says, and praying all manner of prayer. All manner of prayer. And as we do so, that the voice that they have, the testimony that they have, that the door that God has given them to share the gospel, that God will cause it to rest and abide open for them. Let's pray for an infilling of the Holy Spirit, that grace will come, that God will strengthen them, that the season that they're entering, that this particular season, God will be kind to them, that God will cause prayers to be raised, even when they don't realize it, that God, in his infinite mercy, that as the seasons turn on their behalf, as they help so many others to find God in this season, that God will strengthen. We heard that his health was challenged. Let's begin to ask that God, that which you have started, you will finish. That Father, because the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in him that it will quicken his mortal body. We speak over him that nothing, nothing that is untoward will happen to them. We ask, oh God, that your hand will rest and abide upon them. We specifically ask this morning in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody said? Amen. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrate the Lord for a word in due season. God has been so kind. God has been kind today. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. And we're about to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. And if you're listening online, and we really appreciate the fact that you're here, and we know that you've had as great a service as we have, we really encourage you to be part of this. And so there will be an instruction in the chat on the, beside the viewing window, or you can use one of the, the 
methods behind me on the screen. But ladies and gentlemen, while we come to bring our offerings before the Lord, both here and those who are watching or, watching or listening online, as we do so, there was something Dr. Nuzo said that has stuck with me. And it's built around Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And so this is the scripture I'd like us to think about as we bring our tithes and our offerings before the Lord. It is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. And the Bible says that you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He that gives you power to get wealth, so that He, God, may confirm or establish His covenant with you that He promised the fathers, Bajos paraphrasing. But please understand, the focus is that God wants to establish his covenant. That is expressed in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Speaking of the ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That God will cause an abundance to come to you. So that generosity towards the kingdom may be easy. And I pray that that grace will attend you this day. That as you turn towards the kingdom, the abundance to, will bring pr prosperity that allows generosity simply will be yours now and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave you in the very safe hands of our choir as we give our offerings. And we also... Sorry, I forgot this now, and I'll pause to mention it. Whenever anybody comes to this pulpit, we have a tradition and a culture. And it is called a blessed to be a blessing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there's a second envelope in your seat pockets, or there's a second um, place you can indicate online. And that is to sow a seed into the life and ministry of Dr. Okeo Luzo. Because that was a word in due season. Amen? And so, ladies and gentlemen, I leave you in the very safe hands of our choir. Who is like you left in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless world. Nothing in this world will ever satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Your presence is heaven to me Your presence, your presence is heaven to me. Treasure, treasure, treasure. Yeah. In my weakness, you're merciful.
Amen. Celebrate the Lord, someone we're grateful. Celebrate our God. And if you're listening online, you're not alone. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Uh, we have a few announcements that we would like to reiterate this morning. Um, the Pursuit of God, as you saw on 7 News, the Pursuit of God conference is coming and we're, we've got a 21-day prayer and fasting event coming. It's going to be something special. The theme is overflow, as you will have heard. Um, the details of the meetings were there. I'll run over a couple now. Um, the key elements that I would like to reiterate are Fridays, the night of worship. So every Friday, except the first... And every Friday in the pursuit of God, we're meeting from 7 to 10, and it's going to be a worship night. It's going to be something really, really special, as you saw on um, 7 News. So we'd like you to make sure you're part of that. Um, Monday to Thursdays, you've got, we're meeting here 7 to 9, as you will see. But then also Saturdays, I'd like to mention, because we didn't mention it there. On Saturdays, Saturday mornings, from 10 a.m. to 12, we're going to be focusing on very specific prayer areas and so you don't want to miss that the guest ministers lineup has been presented to you so we encourage you to be part of it and there will be guidelines regarding fasting especially if you are pregnant if you are on medication or you are breastfeeding there will be guidelines you must follow medical guidelines if you're going to fast during that period for the rest of us the Lord will lead us um, in the middle of or well, not so much in the middle on the 9th of June which is during the pursuit of God fast, it, that is Pentecost Sunday. And the Church of England has initiated a program called Thy Kingdom Come. And Thy Kingdom Come, the church is gathering on the 9th of June for a service at Trafalgar Square, an open air service. It's going to be something really, really special. And the theme this year, the prayer, is something so simple. Our theme is overflow. But the whole church the ecumenicals, the um, Greek Orthodox, the Anglicans, the Catholics, all of us that are going to the evangelicals, we're gathering that day and we have one prayer point and that is Luke 11 verse 13. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord. Come Holy Spirit. That's the kind of overflow that we're asking for. And so if you would like to be part of that service, it's going to be a great day out. Um, it starts at... Um, there's a family time from 12 to 4, and then the service, the Pentecost service, is from 4 to 6 p.m. So if you would like to be part of it, then the, there will be a link behind me on the screen. Please, it is mandatory that you register. Um, I know it's an open-air service, and I know it is free, but you must register to attend. Please do so. Um, our men's monthly meeting happens this Thursday, and it's a little bit different. Not only are we meeting to pray, but we've got a panel. So we're going to have a Q&A session, and we're going to be covering a variety of subjects. Um, who should be the family breadwinner? Um, practi practi practically living right as a single man. Um, and it, we're going to have panelists. We're going to have people that will be speaking into those areas, and so gentlemen young and old we've got a really great time set up for you um so pastor joseph awani is is going to be on the panel pastor ken sakutu and then deacons bumio Lubodi and kwaban asari are going to be speaking that night and so it's going to be a really interesting night and so we look forward to you. it starts at seven and i can genuinely ensure that i can genuinely encourage all the gentlemen that you'll have a life-changing evening all gentlemen so please make put that in your diaries um, let me remind you once again that we the Christian aid team and can we celebrate the Christian aid team that came um, we really appreciate the fact that they've celebrated fellowship with us today we are grateful um, their table is in the foyer so if you would like to find out something about it or donate or speak to them or find out more please visit their table on the way out as well as the other tables for various things in the foyer and is there anyone worshipping with us for the first time? Is this if this is your first time in Jesus' house? You're, you're our guest today. Can you wave your hand at me if this is your first time in church? We have one hand there. Um, I, I'm sure there's another hand over there. And so Jesus' house, let's give them a round of applause. And 
Since this is your first time in church, we would like to show you some hospitality. We want to let you know who we are, what the church is about, and we want to say thank you for coming. And so if you would, a member of our hospitality team will be with you. They will lead you to a reception that's to my left and your right. Maybe it was because of you that we had such an amazing service. Can we celebrate them as they go, ladies and gentlemen? And while you're doing that, celebrate everybody online who was worshiping with us for the first time. Let's just thank them. Let's give them a round of applause. Jesus House, you can do better than that. Let's let them know that they are loved. We really appreciate their presence. We do. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly stand to your feet while we close the service. We'll be sharing the grace together. And so let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and everybody said and everybody said ladies and gentlemen have a wonderful week